Well, if you're like me, you loved playing outside growing up, and now you can't understand why it seems like your kids never wanna be outside or you have to force them to be out there for more than 15 minutes. I know, it doesn't always make sense. And so coming up, I wanna share with you five toys that can help your kids play outside longer and three other tips that'll make it so you're dragging them in at the end of the day and not the other way around. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from theminimalmom.com. If we haven't met before, I'm married to Tom. We have four kids, ages three through eight. And right here, we like to share tips and tricks about how you can simplify your house really quickly. And so we've been talking a lot about toys and I know a lot of parents often ask, why don't my kids wanna play outside? And sometimes they even say, I don't even think they know how to play outside. And so it can be difficult when we just don't understand why they don't wanna be out there and not knowing how much we should push it. Is this a battle worth fighting at the end of the day? And so this video got just a little bit longer than I was expecting. So I wanna tell you where you can find certain things. First, I wanna share with you some really surprising reasons why it is important to get your kids outside. Then we'll get to the five toys that keep your kids playing outside longer. You're not gonna have to spend a lot of money on these. And then three tips to get them outside and keep them there, as well as what to do if you sometimes have a little fear around this, if you worry about your kids getting hurt outside or something else happening. We've all been there, and so I have some encouragement about that as well. Okay, so like with other times, I think it's helpful to look at the big picture when we're thinking about how much energy to put into sending our kids outside to play. I think if I did a survey of parents and I said, what is your number one goal with your kids? Most of us would say, we just want our kids to be happy, right? But what was happening was, summer vacation would come around and I would feel like I was an activity coordinator for bored children. It just seemed like if I wasn't planning trips to the park and to the zoo and to the beach and the splash pad and play dates that my kids weren't getting enough time outside and they just seemed kind of bored and unhappy and like we really weren't having that great of a summer so I felt like I had to do all these things. But did you know this? So experts recommended that our kids play outside for three hours a day. I know. Only 8% of American children actually achieve this, so if you're thinking, my kids don't come anywhere near that, you are not alone, and my kids don't either, but we're definitely getting a lot better. But what's the point? What's the benefit of it? Well, they say it's kind of like cross-training for kids. They're learning social skills, they're learning problem-solving skills, they have longer attention spans at school, they're better able to regulate their emotions. I think back to my moody kids and I'm like, wow, maybe I just needed to be sending them outside to play. Plus, when they go outside, they are loaded with sensory activities. So that's good news. You don't have to be searching Pinterest anymore or worrying about doing sensory activities with your children. Let them play in the grass, let them play with water, let them climb trees, and they're gonna be getting all of the sensory input that they need. And what's more is time in nature boosts serotonin, and those are our feel-good transmitters. It also lowers anger, anxiety, and stress. I know what you're thinking. I need to be outside more, right? And we do. I mean, our kids need to be outside more, and as adults, we need to be outside more as well. So a funny thing happened last year at our oldest conferences. The teacher said, she must spend a lot of time playing outside. And I was like, what? And she just said that she noticed in school that kids who spend more time outside, they're more eager to learn. They're more curious and they're more in awe of the world around them. She also said that they're more patient with the learning process, they're better problem solvers, and they interact socially better too. I know, these benefits are really awesome. And so, this is not meant to be a guilt trip. I know that as parents, we only have so much energy in a day and so many things on our plate. But if you're wondering how much to push this to get your kids outside to play, and if our goal really is to have happy kids, I do think this is an area that it's worth putting some extra effort in. Okay, so that brings us to toys that keep kids playing outside longer. So the first thing is something to pedal. We all had bikes growing up and what was really interesting is that in our last house, we lived in a townhouse and the house behind us, they had a garage full of every kid toy that you can imagine to play outside. And so it was kind of a good opportunity for me to observe what toys were the kids actually playing with because all of the kids in the neighborhood would go to their garage to get stuff to play with. But you know what it was? It was always the bikes and trikes. Okay, number two is a swing set. 
you know what's funny? This one I bought for $15 at a garage sale. Tom didn't even really want to bring it home because he thought it was so ugly, but it was meant to be kind of an in-between until we can build more like of a rainbow style place system. Well, we've had it for two years now and the kids play on it so much that we've never gotten around to building the rainbow play set. And actually in our video on toys that parents regret buying, I heard a lot of moms say that they regret buying their rainbow play system because they spent upwards of $5,000 on it and really the kids only play with the swings and the sandbox. And so that brings us to item number three, a sandbox. We've had different variations of this over the years. We've had sand and water tables. Those didn't really work so great. We've had the plastic ones with the lid, but now what we found best, we've just gone back to the old fashioned wood frame with sand in it and the kids will play out there for hours. One tip is to have water accessible to it. So the kids like to drag the hose over there so they can make lakes and tunnels and just keep the sand wet and easier to play with. Okay, item number four is something to do with water, whether it's a pool or a sprinkler, something that they can get wet, especially when it's hot out. We've had different variations of this as well. Honestly, the little plastic pools that you can just fill up, dump out each day, they have kept our kids occupied for hours. We've also had little blow up ones and now we did get a bigger pool. The only problem with this is it has chemicals that we have to manage and when the littler kids are outside, then I feel like I need to be out there with them. So if you have older kids, I definitely think this is a good investment and it'll get a lot of use. And yes, we've also find that our kids love playing with squirt guns. Can I say that? I don't know, but that's up to you whether you let your kids play with squirt guns or not. But the dollar store ones don't really cut it here. We've invested in some good quality squirt guns and they play with them forever. Number five is some old pots and pans or other items that aren't breakable so that the kids can make an outdoor kitchen. They have so much fun, especially when it rains and there's a little bit of mud that they can play with, but they come up with all kinds of different dinners and foods that they make with leaves and sticks and rocks. And so this has been worth sending some of my old pots and pans outside for sure. And then my runner up would be a trampoline. I had to apologize to Tom about this because he bought it two years ago and I wasn't sure that our kids were old enough. I worried about the younger ones and if they would be safe on it, but they spend hours on it. I've noticed that it's kind of like their home base in the summer. Sometimes they jump on it. Sometimes they make dance and gymnastics routines. Other times they just sit on it and read or color. It's kind of their fort since we know those plastic playhouses and stuff don't keep them occupied. And so it has been a good investment if you're looking to spend a little bit more money this summer. I know sometimes we think that there's some magical toy we can buy and then it'll keep them outside longer, but you know, I tell you what, over the years we've had just about every toy you can imagine, the t-ball sets and the golf sets and different things you can throw and catch and, and all of that kind of stuff. And they always seem to go back to these, you know, old faithfuls, probably that a lot of them you had growing up as well. Okay, so maybe you're thinking, yeah, we have all of these things and I still can't get my kids to play outside. I totally understand that and we've been there. So let's talk about three ways that you can keep your kids playing outside. Okay, number one, I have to set time limits and just keep pushing them back outside. So usually I'll say you need to be outside for an hour and every time they come back in, I'll say, well, you can do chores. You know, your sister's playing outside so well, so why don't you come inside and do her chores and then you can be inside. But keep this in mind, most often creativity lies just past boredom. So you might have to let your kids in fact, you will have to let your kids get bored. Let them come in a few times saying they're bored, keep pushing them back inside. And then this is when the magic occurs. This is when they finally figure out some other things to play with outside. And then they don't wanna come back inside. So let them get bored and just keep pushing them back outside. And then I'll also offer rewards. So I'll say, well, if you're outside for this amount of time, we'll have popsicles outside or ice cream, or we'll have a picnic for lunch. Anything I can do to find things that we can do outside so that they're more comfortable out there. Okay, now this third one, I'm not sure how you're gonna feel about, but I bump the thermostat up in the summer. If you came to my house right now, it would be set at 78 or 80. So that it's not such a stark contrast when they come inside and they're like, oh, it feels so good in here. I don't wanna go back outside. I don't wanna make it so comfortable for them. And I know Tom will come home and he'll bump it right back down. And then we think, well, we have to be in, you know, this warm temperature too. But this is how far I'm willing to go to keep my kids playing outside because I do know how important it is. And one other tip is just to make sure that they have appropriate clothing. You know, in the past, if it was raining outside, I didn't want anything to do with them being out there because I knew the mess that I would have to deal with afterwards. But now I know that I have to take the good with the bad. So if I want them playing outside on really nice days, then 
I need to let them have fun outside on the not so nice days too. So rain boots, rain coats, you know, certainly cold weather gear. I find it all at garage sales and have multiples of each. So when they lose or destroy things, I have other ones ready to go. But this has made a really big difference with me feeling comfortable making them stay outside knowing that they're dressed properly. Okay, so one other thing worth talking about is what to do if you worry about your kids when they're outside playing. I've been there. I would worry that they'd get hurt, that they would go too far outside of the boundaries that we set up for them or worse. Let's face it, it doesn't feel like the same world today that we grew up in. And so what do we do? Well, I know this, that, you know, we talked about the benefits of our kids playing outside and that is so important. And so I have to weigh it against what could happen. They could get hurt. I mean, like right here, my five-year-old found this like huge stick that he's lifting and all I can see is our three-year-old getting poked in the eye with it or something like that, you know? But I think back to my childhood and there were full afternoons where my parents had no idea where they were, but they knew we were in a safe environment. And so most of us probably live in a safe neighborhood. And if not, obviously then that's a different consideration. But if we live in a safe area, we need to let our kids be kids. And so in the beginning, you know, I would be outside with them part of the time and I would keep checking on them. But over time and by keeping them outside longer, I developed a comfort level with it where now they can be outside for multiple hours at a time and I don't worry about it. Yeah, I still check up on them, of course. And, you know, and I've taught them different things along the way of how they can be safe outside. But it's something that will come with time and like I said, when we look at what's most important, I do the things I can do to help them be safe outside and then I need to let them be kids. Okay, so I hope this is a good encouragement to you that you don't have to buy anything for your kids, you don't have to keep planning play dates, and you certainly don't have to figure out the things for them to do outside. Really, the best thing we can do for our kids is just keep telling them to go back outside and play. So would you leave a comment? What toys do your kids love playing with outside or, or what ways have you found to keep them playing outside? Leave a comment below. A lot of moms will scan through the comments for other ideas as well. And certainly if you have any questions, please leave them below whether it's about playing outside or other questions for our toy series. And if you haven't had a chance, be sure to check out all of our other videos on simplifying toys. Be sure to subscribe because there are more videos coming. It seems like one just leads to the next. And as always, the best compliment you can give us is a thumbs up.